back to another episode of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Susie Selleck, your host. Today we are in LaGrange, Indiana, here at the First Presbyterian Church, and I'm joined by Pastor Ken Weaver. Ken, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much for coming and sharing with us. So I want to know, is this the congregation's original building? It's actually our third building. Okay. We were uh, formed in 1844. The first building was built in 1853 a small frame building that the congregation quickly outgrew. And in 1882, land was purchased in this area. It was open land, no houses around at all. And one of the members donated bricks, all the bricks that are used here, to get the building process started. And then we had, uh, uh, the town is a bit of history. The town was plotted in uh, 1836 and was made the county seat in 1840. Oh, very close so, to. So, the okay. very close, so yeah. within four years, um, a Reverend Benjamin Ogden was commissioned by the Presbyterians. He was from Three Rivers, Michigan, to come down to LaGrange as it was a growing town. And they uh, found six Presbyterians, and there were six Presbyterians, and the pastor were the first members <laughs> of the congregation. <laughs> That's great. Ken, when was this sanctuary that we're in right now, when was that built? This started construction in 1882, and it uh, was a process of a year or more. The part that we're in, the sanctuary here, is the original structure from 1882. There's been add-ons all around it, okay. but uh, this is the original building, and it has really functioned as, as a, um, a home base for the congregation for these 175 years. Ken, what are the major additions, renovations that were made to the original uh, construction? Well, one of the first things that was done in the early 1990, uh, 1910, 1911, was the new hardwood floor that's raised toward the back of the sanctuary. Why is it raised? So, so the folks in the back have a better view and can, uh, it, uh, I don't know exactly the reason that, no, folks, I think that's, but I think yeah. it was sort of a theater arrangement so yes. that Presbyterians tend to sit in the back rows of the <laughs> sanctuary and uh, get every, it feels closer to the front when you're in the back, which you're up a little bit. Okay. And then uh, following that, the organ was put in. Yes. And uh, that's been a treasure for us. Put in in 1913. 1913? And in 2013, we did a total restoration of it and it's been rebuilt back to its original specifications, except that it has an electric blower now. It was powered by the hand, uh, what do they call it, Baff baffles. Um, you would know more than me. And so uh, I, I'll think of that maybe later. Okay. <laughs> but wow. it was hand powered okay. when it was first put in. There were three pumps and up, up the three people needed to pump air so that one pump was always forcing air through the organ. It um, is a uh, Henner's pneumatic tracker organ with about 785 pipes. Some of the smaller pipes are the size of a pencil. Wow. Some of the bigger pipes are 14 feet tall and about eight inches in diameter. It is, it, it is spectacular to look at. I mean, it's just, it's, it's epic that makes this part of, of where you stand. We enjoy it immensely. Uh -huh. We enjoy it immensely, and we use it every Sunday at worship. Uh, Kevin Raymer, our organist, has been our organist for 35 years now, and uh, is, is, does a wonderful job for How us. How long have you been pastor here? Uh, for 14 years, came in 2005. Okay. Ken, since this is history in your own backyard, can you take us back a little bit to the, the 40s, the 60s, and talk a little bit about those renovations? Well, one of the interesting things done in the 40s was that the uh, sanctuary did not have a full basement under it, and the men of the church hand dug a basement. It took them several years, but hand dug a basement under the sanctuary, and that basement became classrooms for Sunday school and eventually were uh, used as overflow classrooms by the local school district for first, second, third graders, I believe. Wow, so you don't even have like a good, it's just like, oh yeah, we did a contractor and, and like here's, the, here's the, the, how much it costs. Like the men were yeah. like, let's get our shovels oh, and go dig. That's what that's I understand. Awesome. That's, that's what awesome. I understand. So, all right, and then, all right, then used for overflow, and, mm -hmm. and then and you said that was when? In the, in the early 40s, 40s in that the 40s. was put in. Okay. And then in the 1960s, the narthex, there was a major redesign. There were major discussion about whether 
the congregation needed to leave this building and build brand new out in the edge of town. Really? And they decided to stay put and add on. So the, uh, the back of the sanctuary here was mm -hmm. the back of the building until the 1960s. So what you see beyond the double doors is part of the addition in the 1960s, as well as the office and the kitchen on the, on the back of the building was put in new. And then later, after I came uh, as pastor, one of the first projects the congregation did is that the rooms you see in the far corner yeah. uh, are the first floor of the bell tower. And that, when that wall was a solid wall back there with just the stained glass, yeah. people entered and left through the bell tower. Really? So they walked up steps into the bell tower and into the sanctuary through those doors in the back. Oh, that's neat. And so what, when the 60s renovation was done, that was blocked off. Right. And we had a visitor in the, in the building who uh, I was explaining that to. Mm -hmm. And she said, that ought to be a prayer room. And so the congregation just took it. And if you take a look at it, it's a beautiful little prayer room. I, so I, I do a little snooping before okay. the interviews. <laughs> okay. And actually, I saw that. And, and I, I did wonder what it was. And I'm like, he'll probably get into it. So yeah. that's great that that's what it's used for. And that's all that, I mean, that we never had a budget meeting or hired anybody except somebody to put up some drywall one place. It was the congregation said, I can do this, I can do this, and let's do it this way, and it all came together. That's great. And that gave this congregation confidence, and uh, it wasn't long after that the air conditioners went in for the first time. In 2009, the building was air conditioned. Really? In 2009? <laughs> what, what were you using before then? Fans? Well, we had some big With, fans. Okay. <laughs> right. I thought that made it hard Little for fans. you to project <laughs> over the fans. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Very yeah, we'd cool. open the doors and blow fans in and out of the sanctuary, and, and uh, everybody had their own little fan, too, on the hot days. Oh, yeah. It was a great relief to right. have air conditioning. Oh, that's fun. And uh, that led to a real spirit of we can change some things and led into the organ res restoration then following that. And you said uh, that year was 2013. 20, 2013. It was the 100th year. It was installed in 1913, and we used the 20th year to, uh, or the 100th year, 2013, to Very awesome. tear it apart. Uh, it's about as big as an average sized room in the house. It goes way back into the wall. It was, every pipe was taken apart. Wow. And uh, it took about four months from we hired the uh, Levson Organ Company out of Buffalo, Iowa. That okay. did the work for us. Yeah. And, and you said it took four months to four months. get it torn apart and rebuilt. They came and uh, in a January, middle of January, spent three weeks tearing it down, documenting everything, took a van load and a trailer load of it back to Iowa, reworked pipes and built new things that needed to be built in their shop. And about two months later, they came back, and it took them about another three weeks to set everything up and put wow. it back together. Oh, that's but cool. It was, a, it was a highlight for us as a congregation. Well worth the time, money, and effort, for sure. Yeah. And my bet money, <laughs> like that middle, that middle word doesn't go overlooked. How much time, do you know price range what that was? Well, the, the whole renovation for the organ was a little bit under $50,000, which okay. was uh, very reasonable for us. Yeah. Uh, we, at the same time, rebuilt the, the uh, chancel area here, put in these steps, um, redid the sanctuary. It was about a $75,000 job. Okay, okay. And the one thing that was, that um, started it um, was that when we started talking about it, we had a 94-year-old member who said, I've been able to listen to that organ all my life. I want the next generations coming after me to be able to listen to it too. Here's a major gift, and uh, and some other people stepped up and says we're helping out too. And within a few weeks, we had more than half of the money needed to do the job. And within a year, the congregation had it paid off. Ken, how do you think that this worship space has really shaped your congregation through the years? Well, I think it's it's inspired us and held us together. We had a member say that we probably wouldn't still be a congregation today if it hadn't been that this congregation focused us. This uh, sanctuary gave us work to do. It inspired us, and uh, we were determined to keep it going. Mm -hmm. And during some of the lean times over the years, that was really the difference, I think. 
It, it really is a spiritual home for us, um, not just a physical place. Right. And we have some uh, one family that uh, has six generations that have been here continuously. The first member of their family joined the church in 1845. Oh, that is great. And, uh, so we hear stories and there's uh, just a determination to keep that going as long as we can. Yes, I'm cheering you on for that all, all day. So you've been here for 14 years, yes. right? Now, how many, how many pastors have served this congregation? Well, uh, 29 or actually 28 because there was a pastor, uh, David Truesdale, who served from 1910 to 1914 and then again from 1936 to 1942. Oh. So he had two pastorates 25 years apart. An interesting note about that is that during his first pastorate, the organ was put in. 25 years later during his second pastorate, the chimes were added. And so he, we don't know much about him other than he was the pastor during both of those uh, installations here at the, at the congregation. Ken, how has your congregation shared the building, the space with the community over the years? Well, one of the, one of the things in the early 40s, uh, the local school district was uh, crowded for space and we became a classroom for kindergartners, first graders, and second graders. Really? And, uh, that went on for about 14, 15 years. Some of our members of the congregation taught school for, the sc for Lakeland schools, and they taught in the classroom here in the church. Oh, I love that. And so uh, in addition to that, we had uh, preschools, and uh, we, we host grief support groups for the community. And most recently, we, uh, since the organ restoration, we've been having some music recitals and uh, musicals that we open to the community and have had a good response for that. That's great, which leads me into another question. So events and things like that around, I mean, what are, what are some of the things that you guys do, have coming up, have recently done? Well, one of the things that uh, I think this whole building thing sort of inspired too was one of our members brought uh, a need in the community to our attention, uh, children in need, abused, neglected children, children removed from their parents um, on a temporary period of time. And the congregation uh, said, we can do something about that and organized a, uh, an effort to build what we call the farm place, which uh, the house is just being finished now and there'll be a barn and a lodge and so that children with their therapist or with their DCS worker uh, can come out and visit the farm and play with the animals, maybe during supervised visitation. And, uh, and then the, the home will house a foster family and they'll keep foster children as well. And that organization has now spun off and it's its own independent 501c3 wow. ministry. But so the church has, has acted sort of as a quick incubator. Ken, I understand that this is your 175th year, okay, uh, as a congregation, how are you celebrating this milestone? We've been thinking about it for a while and decided that it was more than could be done in a day, so we chose a week, and it'll start on uh, Sunday, the August the 11th, okay. and run through Sunday, August the 18th, and have a series of uh, things planned. The first Sunday, there'll be a legacy worship where we invite all the members and family members of members that ever attended here, and uh, we're trying to connect to all the history we can find and invite them to a special worship service where we celebrate our history. And then we're gonna have uh, follow that with a little pottery workshop to make communion chalices. Oh, that's cool. For everybody. So that's our Sunday. Then that Tuesday that week, we're having a, uh, a 19, uh, an 1840s circuit rider preacher come in to do a worship service in costume from the 1840s. Oh. Sweet. and then having a dinner and doing a little historical storytelling after that. And then on Thursday that week, we have uh, Paul Conrad, a director of training from Aspen, an organization in Indianapolis, is coming to talk to us older folks and the 20 and 30 year olds and the community about the different generational challenges and bridges and yeah. how 70 year olds have trouble understanding 20 year olds and 20 year olds. So we're making a day out of just focusing on that question we had an interesting uh, experience just recently with that group. Um, 
My generation's used to using checks and credit cards to handle budgets and pays bills. Yeah. That's just not working for the 20 and 30 year olds. Mm -hmm. And we had to sort of get a different bank account and a debit card and kind of catch up with electronic banking. <laughs> just, that was just a barrier yeah. that we didn't know about until we started these conversations. Wow. So then on Friday that week, we have um, Savannah Whitaker's coming for a contemporary Christian music concert. Okay. In the in yes. the young adults building. Yes. And then uh, the um, Sunday, the the 18th is a spiritual renewal Sunday that uh, we're kind of wrapping everything up with with a special worship service and communion. And then at 2 p.m. that Sunday, Eric Plutz, who's the Princeton University organist, is giving a concert on this organ here in the sanctuary. Oh, and, that's and, great. And his great 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 grandparents were members here. And we tracked that down. Oh, Ken, this has been such a nice interview to do. I, really and truly, I always love when a church with great tradition and great history has a present day focus for the here and the now and, and you know, a future as well. So this has been very uplifting for me. I've enjoyed my time with you, Ken. Thank you. Well, thank you very so much. much. Thank you. Thank you for watching another episode of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm your host, Susie Selleck, here today in LaGrange, Indiana, at the First Presbyterian Church here with Pastor Ken Weaver. Ken, thanks again for having us. Thank you. And remember, travel, travel slowly, slowly and, and stop, stop often. often. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.